The other day I did a video with my friend Peter Rukavina and he was uh, showing me his top five pens. And today I'm going to show you uh, one of his pens. I asked if I could borrow it for this video and he kindly said yes. So what I'm showing you is the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. And it's a really interesting pen. It's designed in Canada. Uh, I believe it's made in, in uh, China or Taiwan. I, I'm not too sure. Most likely China. It um, has some really interesting characteristics and uh, some d design features. And it's called the brush pen. Now, I, you know, there are brush pens and they, they have like uh, synthetic fibers on the end, like almost like a, a felt tip marker in some ways. And they, they, they work with paints and things like that. But this is a fountain pen. And when I uh, hadn't really um, handled one before or looked at one that often, and holding it, I realize why I, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming why it's called a, a brush pen. Uh, at first glance, it looks like your classical cigar shape, uh, shaped pen. You know, very much say like the Pilot Metropolitan, except the Pilot Metropolitan is a thicker pen. But when I looked at my, <laughs> you know, old watercolor brushes, I saw a couple design elements in the, uh, Ferris wheel brush pen that reminds me of the end of the handle of a fountain of a of a paintbrush. As you can see, it it sort of tapers down into a very sort of rounded tip, and that is how this pen reminds me of. It sort of tapers down into a thinner end, you know. Uh, so it 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 feels very much like the handle of a brush, at least to me, and I'm assuming that's why it's called the brush pen. Um, first glance, looking at them alone, I would think it reminds me quite a bit like uh, a Pilot Metropolitan. and But side by side, there are quite a few differences. This is a longer, slightly longer, and quite a bit thinner pen than the Metropolitan. Uh, but build materials are different. This is a metal pen, and this, this I believe, is plastic or, or a resin pen. Um, the shape, though at first glance, is quite similar. Uh, when you're looking at them very close, there's, uh, they're quite different in some ways. As I said, this is thicker, this is thinner. You know, the, the caps are, at first glance, very similar shaped, but the bodies... Uh, you know, this tapers down quite thin to a brush shape. <laughs> uh, the other uh, uh, thing that really ca catches your eye is, of course, the Metropolitan has a clip and the Ferris wheel brush doesn't have a clip, but it does ha uh, have essentially a brass bolt or a uh, 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 piece right here that is designed probably to keep the pen from, well, it is designed to keep the pen from rolling off your desk. Quite often a clip, a clip even though it sticks in your shirt pocket, is the original intent, it, and it keeps the pen from rolling away. So the, the Ferris wheel brush doesn't have a clip, but it has this brass bolt or a nugget nut, or whatever you're going to call it, here to keep the pen from rolling. So it's it's kind of a nice little feature. This is where the design gets quite interesting, in my opinion. It turns into a classical fountain pen at first glance, but then it has almost like a steampunk <laughs> uh, industrial quality to it. In some ways, too, another thing it reminds me of is the torpedo. It's very sleek. It looks like it swim through the water very, very quickly. Uh, you unscrew it. And you have this really quite beautiful brass section here. And it has a steel nib. Um, and on the nib it says Ferris will press. And there's a little Canadian maple leaf right on the end. Which is kind of nice because it's a, it's a Canadian company. Uh, Ferris wheel also is very well known for its inks. Actually, its inks are becoming uh, one of the defining uh, products of the company in some ways. they become very popular. Um, now, the other thing that you see is 
there's all this on, on the brass, there's some really quite handsome engraving. And it says along here, just at the, at the tip, designed in Canada. You really can't see it that well, but it's it, right on the end there. It says designed in Canada. Uh, the company is based in Markham, Ontario. Um, the pen is designed by the, uh, by the company. They also make uh, uh, roller balls, and they also have a smaller uh, fountain pen. This uh, at my local bookstore, the bookmark costs 169 Canadian. Uh, and there's a smaller one that I was looking on their, online at their website. I haven't actually seen it in person, but it looks very much like the size of a, a Quebeco Sport. And there's similarities uh, in design in some ways. So I might actually try to pick one of those up. It's like $33 listed online. Uh, so, yeah, so... This here, the brass, I'm assuming over time is going to develop a really nice patina. It's going to probably get very rich in color as you handle it. Um, you know, so I think that's going to look quite quite nice. It has a steel nib. Uh, I believe you can get a gold plated one too. Um, and I'm assuming it's probably oh, maybe a, Yo, a, a Joe O nib or something along that line. I'm not too sure what the nib is. Now, this is brass, and you can see there's, if you look in there, you see there's brass screws, but uh, one, one thing I do like is there's screw threads are on the brass section here. So you're not having brass on plastics that would eventually strip the, the threads on the plastic body. So that's actually quite well thought out, very solid, when you close it up, it's a nice solid uh, seal, uh, probably very airtight. I don't see a breather hole anywhere on the pen at all. Uh, when you're holding it in your hand, it really feels well made and it feels like an expensive pen in many ways. You, you can almost, it, the, the, the plastic doesn't feel cheap. Uh, there's a very nice finish on the pen. I would be a little weird, uh, I'd be a little worried posting it. I, I generally like to post my pens, but with the uh, brass threads, I would be worried that it would scuff up the plastic. But, and I'm, you know, I, I would say it can be posted. I wouldn't push it hard, you know. Um, yeah, so I would probably, if this was my pen, I wouldn't post it. Uh, that's just a personal thing. Now, how does it write? Um, that's a nice green ink. I believe that's one of the Ferris wheel inks that Peter had put in it. I, I'm not too sure what color. He had mentioned it the other day. So the quick... And I can't talk and write at the same time. <laughs> the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy... I would say it writes very smoothly, very nice writer. You know, there's no line variation really in the in the in the pen, but that's to be expected with a steel nib that's, you know, uh, not a flex not a flex nib in any way. But it looks like a medium uh, on this pen. I'm not too sure what sizes they come in. Probably fine, probably extra fine medium and fine, of course. It's not what I would call overly wet, but I, that might also be the ink. It has a nice flow to it, but um, you know, it's not what you would call a wet wet writer. <clears throat> nice, uh, probably your standard plastic feed looks very familiar in some ways. Uh, but all in all, I think it's a lovely pen. Uh, very well designed. Doesn't feel nothing about it feels cheap. Um, be kind of interesting to see if they ever come up with a, a gold nib. Um, like I said, at uh, the bookmark in Charlottetown here, I believe it's listed at 170, 169, something like that. Uh, so it's not an inexpensive pen. Uh, and it's, you know, I really like the product. I think it's a great pen. You know, it's very similar in shape with some differences. 
here it is compared to, say, a Kaveco, uh, no, uh, sorry, a Twisby Echo. And it's a little longer, quite a bit thinner, a little longer than the Metropolitan. And yeah, so that's about it. I know that it comes in a nice variety of colors, and quite often they're very fun colors, bright, cheerful colors with lots of fun names. And uh, I don't have the packaging on hand, but they are, they come in really nicely designed boxes with lots of, um, you know, almost circus-like elements to, to the design. You know, the old circus poster uh, is kind of what it reminds me of. So that also carries through with that steampunk theme that I think they have. So... Uh, yeah, all in all, I like the pen a lot. Um, if you have one, I'd love to hear your comments. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, what if you have one? What's your what, what's your favorite color in it? Do you have a, any uh, more information about the nib? I'd like to hear it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's uh, fun doing the the videos and doing reviews, and the channel is slowly grow, growing. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. It's helping me, you know, reach my goal of hitting a thousand <laughs> you know i have a, these funny goals of what i want to do with the channel and i hope to be able to do more uh fountain pen reviews with friends sitting down and talking about their personal collections i really enjoy that because you know i have a i don't have a huge collection but i have a lot of i still have a lot of pens i haven't reviewed from my own collection but you know some of my friends have really interesting pens such of course as the ferris wheel brush and uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more with other people from my pen club or people that I know and who are into fountain pens. And uh, so anyway, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.